What do we have here? It's Castle Grayskull. And it's mine. Not so fast, Beast Man. We thought we'd kick off 2016 by restoring a full playset. We haven't done one of those since the Death Star, and we have a great one. Our friends Chuck and Rob found a Masters of the Universe Castle Grey Skull that had been, I guess, abandoned or, you know, sold at a garage sale, whatever, and they didn't know if we wanted it uh, because they'd seen us restore Castle Grey Skull in one of our earliest videos. But what they didn't know was that I never owned my own Castle Grey Skull. The one in the videos from a few years ago is my brother's, and it would always be kind of cool in my mind to have my own Castle Grey Skull because Mattel's playset was the definition of iconic. So it's in really great shape. I've got a multitude of parts here. I've got more parts on the way. But let's get started and get this thing back on its feet. As you can see, Castle Grayskull is just one of those play sets that can take a beating and keep on going. You would have had to smash it with a hammer to really wreck one of these things. They were very well made. This one's got some dirt on it. it it's, uh, it's, it looks like it's been abandoned in a shed somewhere at some point. But at least it hasn't been in the sun. The colors look good. We can just get this cleaned up. We might have a good base to start from. Uh, first thing you have to do, of course, is clean out the inside. And in the case of this one, there's really not a lot left to clean out. One of the floors is missing, so I'll have to replace that. Uh, we do have the throne and we have one floor here. And these just pop out with a little bit of, a little bit of encouragement. There we go. That's two. All right, now for these levels or these uh, platforms, uh, it's clipped on by these. Uh, sort of uh, tabs, so we just want to press in a little bit, it comes right off. All right, we're going to get this out of the way, and now we can start cleaning. As you can see, there aren't any stickers left on the bottom, so we're going to get rid of that as well, and we're going to have to find a replacement sticker for this piece, as well as a few other uh, places in the castle. But let's get to cleaning. As you can see, it's now cleaner than it was. It's got some paint scratches here and there, but that just adds to its character. This is going to be my personal Castle Grey Skull, so I'm not really concerned with a few paint marks and rubs here and there. I think it looks really good. It adds to that whole vintage flavor. And I, as, as I said, Castle Grey Skull was always such a robust uh, playset. It, it, it just wouldn't look right if it didn't have a few little uh, nicks and scratches here and there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rebuild the throne room floor and then we're going to work on one of the, uh, the roof cannons and then after that we'll probably go on to part two. But let's get on to this uh, throne room level because that's sort of the, the key element of Castle Grayskull. It was its main hat trick. One of the coolest features of Castle Grayskull is also the most often broken and that's the throne room. Uh, the throne room was famous in the commercial. You would turn the throne and it would open a trap door in the floor and send any heroes or villains falling into a dungeon, which was just a sticker uh, on the bottom of the, the lowest floor. Uh, our Castle Grayskull came, fortunately, with the level itself and with the throne, but it didn't have the often broken uh, carpeted floor nor the mechanism underneath uh, that helps operate uh, the whole shebang. Uh, I've been able to source one of these off of eBay. It has an original sticker with some weathering on it, but I'm glad that it has the vintage sticker just like the throne room does. I'm going to keep these uh, as they are. I'm not going to change them. Um, if a vintage sticker for me is, you know, 80% there and it's still on there nicely, I try and keep it if I can. So let's rebuild this throne room here. I'll show you how this works. The first thing you want to do is uh, we cleaned this floor so we removed uh, the throne from it. It's very simple. It's just on there by uh, kind of a pressure fit uh, peg. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, and make sure, by the way, 
with your thrones that it still has the peg on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. If it doesn't have this peg right here under the right foot, uh, then your mechanism is not going to work. You need to find another throne. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is line up the throne with the, uh, the floor. You want to make sure that your floor peg is in this channel right here. So we place that and then very gently using the other side we twist and I'm just going to twist lightly. So now that we've got our throne pegged to the floor and you'll know it's correct because you have the peg in the channel right here, it moves freely. The next stage is going to be putting this bracket in place. This bracket controls the entire magic trick. Alright, now the way this works, your first step is you have to get it around this little guy right here. And the way you do that is first you turn it vertical, you wrap it around that, that peg, and then you turn it. Now at that point, you need to push it underneath this lip right here, and then it will fit through the throne peg and be held in place. Click, and there it is. So now, when you turn this, you'll see that it pushes this piece out of the way, allowing the trap door to fall. And when you turn it back, it resets to keep the trap door in place. All right, now the last stage, of course, is to put the trap door in. So I'm going to turn it like this to open it. You'll always know that the trap door is locked when the throne is facing outward. When the throne is facing the trap door, it springs the trap and moves uh, the catch out of the way. The last step is straightforward, but it's a little hair-raising because this is the most broken part of Castle Grayskull. It is a carpeted, <laughs> stickered trap door with four plastic hinges. You know where I'm going with this. These hinges are always broken off one or two or all four, and then you don't have a functioning trap door anymore. The way I uh, dealt with this with my brothers when I got a replacement um, was I, uh, I put a little bit of, uh, actually of all things, I put a little bullwhip wax uh, on the uh, hinges. It's called Picard's, and it kind of is, is sort of like a, uh, a grease uh, that helps uh, the plastic pieces go together without straining uh, and then snapping off. That's the kind of thing that makes me nervous. All right, you can never take too much time doing these kinds of things. Take as much time as you need, go slowly. You saw what happened on the Night Raven. We didn't want this to happen with this part. Uh, even though the Castle Grayskull parts are numerous, this particular part is a little harder to come by intact. So take all the time you need when you're, when you're fitting it. If you feel like it's gonna break, Trust your instincts, back off, take a breath, go watch an episode of your favorite show, and then come back and try again. But now that that's in place, we can keep it level, and we turn the chair, and it sits. And then when we turn the chair, it works. One of the popular features of Castle Grayskull were the two upper floors that were in the turrets. Uh, this floor is easy to come by because it's just a solid piece of plastic. The other one, the smaller turret, is more difficult to come by. It's the turret floor that had the cannon mounted into it. And as you can see, it has some purpose-built tabs and slots to put that cannon in. Uh, obviously, these break off a lot, and then you don't have a fully functioning or mint condition floor. This one actually has some gouging, but because the tabs were intact, I, I, I grabbed it immediately. Um, but there's another little quirk with Castle Grey Skull that I've run into in starting uh, this restoration, and I didn't know it until we started this process. There are actually two different cannon mounts that were designed for the Castle Grey Skull cannon. 
There is a fully closed mount, which is the one that was on my brother's. And then there's this open mount. I th at first, you know, I thought it was broken. Um, it sits like this, just like the other cannon, but it doesn't. And as you can see, it pops out all the time because there's nothing holding it there. Uh, the cannon itself is identical. This one uh, has some, um, uh, this one has the barrels broken off, as you can see, so I can't use it. But I'd like to use this mount if I could. I might be asking for trouble, but I'm going to try and remove this cannon from this mount and then put this cannon in its place. So let's see if we can make that happen. All right, that was relatively straightforward. I'm trying to be gentle so I don't crack anything. Well, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Whew. All right. Well, that's done. And now we can put this right. You see these tabs? You don't want to push too hard because you don't want to crack these off, but just enough where it's snug, lightly snug. This is the fun part of any step in a restoration, putting back the pieces that you've already worked on and starting to get the toy back to tip-top shape. So first we'll put the throne room back in place. Make sure that these sides are snug. All right, there's our throne room. Here's our blank floor, and it goes in these slots here in the upper turret. As you can see, it doesn't sit very snugly, but it's there. And here's our cannon. And it slots in right above the throne. And one more little element that I have that I found was the flag. And this is an original flag. Um, it has the original sticker still surviving on it somehow. But I like that. I like the idea that this ancient castle has this ancient tattered standard uh, above it. Uh, I don't think I'll replace this. It's just too cool looking. And that can go here. Although I guess you could put it here if you want it, but it doesn't fit very well. Or you could put it right there. For now, that's where we'll leave it. Castle Grayskull is coming along nicely. I think part two will be the final assembly after we get a few things worked out and a few last parts bought. In the next step, we're going to be talking about stickers, we're going to be talking about weapons racks, and we're going to be talking about that pesky elevator.